So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the live culinary with JP and myself. Um, we have got a lot to get through this morning. We've made some great recipes and I want to share with some of the things that I've done. We know it's butternut squash and um, butternut squash and spaghetti, spaghetti squash season. So what we're going to like, what I did, I actually roasted mine in the oven because like I said, uh, previously said, it was very hard to peel and chop and all that. So what I did, I baked them in the oven and I took actually a short way out. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna show you with the butternut squash, after I cooked it, I took the seeds out, okay? And then you just scrape it. And as you see the scraping, it all, almost comes out like spaghetti. You're gonna see like lines of it. Little strands, yeah. Mm -hmm. Little strands of spaghetti. Okay, so. That is your butternut squash. And what we did with the butternut squash, we made a salad. We made um, the lemon and thyme butternut squash salad in quinoa. It's with um, pumpkin seeds and some of the delicious vegetables that we got from our CSA yesterday. We got a salad mix and some beautiful tomatoes. So I made that. And now I'm going to show you how I did a pumpkin, um, not pumpkin, I'm sorry, butternut squash soup. Right. Did the same thing with the pumpkin. I just put it in the oven and the it whole makes thing, it, yeah. Mm -hmm. The whole thing, whole. I just put a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper on the skin. And then as you see, it really peels easy and it kind of goes to like a little mush. But what I've done here, I'm gonna go over to the stove and I'm gonna make you a healthy soup. Really simple to make. I've heated my oil, so I'm gonna add some onions. This recipe has no cream in it. Completely vegan. Okay, I have some uh, onions in the pan frying. Now I'm going to turn it up a little bit. You can probably hear the sizzle a little bit. So I'm going to saute the onions. I'm going to add some fresh garlic. So I'm going to a couple of spoons of garlic. I will put the recipe on later. I'm going to add some carrots. We also got some carrots in our bag yesterday. Yeah. Got some fresh carrots there. Some Granny Smith apples, nice and sharp. I'm going to stir all that up. Let that go a little bit. Oh, you have that. Um, salt and pepper. Salt, pink salt, a bit better for you. Right, so I'm going to let that have to go a few minutes, and I'm going to add some cinnamon. It's your choice, whatever else you have. Now, a little bit of cinnamon, and I'm going to go and get some fresh thyme. Give me one minute. We have some fresh thyme in here. All the herbs are great. Get that going. I, you can really smell the, uh, you know, the fragrance. So it's time for me to add the broth. All right, so I'm going to add the broth. Oops. I spilled a little bit there. I'm going to add the broth and then I'm going to add the pump. Then I'm going to add the pumpkin. This is the pumpkin I baked in the oven. And we're going to bring this to a boil. And let that cook for like simmer for about 15, 20 minutes. All right, so I'm going to bring it up. Let everything get soft in there. Now, after this is done, I, you let it cool down for a little bit. And then, here is your butternut squash. So what I, I let it cool down and I put it in a deeper bowl. I tried to do it in the saucepan at first, but it went everywhere. But if you have a blender, I'm using like the actual hand mixer. And you just make it, now this has no 
chocolate in it whatsoever. It's, it's very creamy. Clearly you don't need to use your, you don't need to use any heavy creams in it. Okay, so that's my two. Alrighty. It doesn't fall. Right, so see how creamy? Wow. Looks great. Right, so, so we're gonna have our bowl of soup. It's a big bowl of soup, but but um, you um, some people put like a dollop of Greek yogurt in there. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna just put some fresh herbs. That's all it needs to me. It really does taste pretty amazing. Well, some fresh thyme. And that's your soup. So real simple. Stick it in the oven. You can also put pumpkin seeds. You can put pumpkin seeds on it. I've roasted some pumpkin seeds. And you can put quinoa on it. If you've got extra quinoa, that's really good for you. And JP's actually going to be speaking a little bit about quinoa later on um, during his class. Um, the water of the week, I squeezed the lemon because with the salad, we needed lemon zest. So I squeezed the lemon in here with um, basil and fresh basil, fresh mint. So that's the water of the week. It's really important to keep hydrated. Just make a jug of water every day and just keep pouring it out. When you pass, keep sipping at it. It's really good. All right, you feel less tired. And now, JP, your turn. Great. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Um, that looks very good. Uh, just before I start, so yeah, we'll continue doing some more of the pumpkin um, and squashes for the fall season. But before, yeah, she mentioned she used in her salad uh, quinoa. I, I, it was red quinoa. Doesn't matter which kind of quinoa you want. There's white, there's Red. Sometimes they mix it in three uh, types, but we just wanted to do in terms of nutrition tips that how good the quinoa is. Uh, remember that is a, it's, it's a whole grain. It actually is a seed, you know, it's a seed, not a grain, but um, has a lot of protein in it. Just cooks like rice. It takes a little, um, not too much time, just with some water that you can season or vegetable stock, um, uh, preferably low sodium. Um, just like half a cup of it has like under 111 calories and uh, more, a little more than four grams of protein. Uh, and of course it's a good source of fiber with 2.6 grams. So, you know, you sometimes I even make it with brown rice and I put a little bit of tablespoons of quinoa in the rice as I cook. So it just added a little bit more. Um, it depends how you want to try it, but tr just give it a try because it's really good. And like in a salad like uh, Sam did or in like uh, putting it in, um, uh, also in soups is great. Uh, it's definitely like that squash soup. That's so good. Um, if you can also, um, the spaghetti squash also, or any kind of squashes are really good for you too. Uh, spaghetti squash in particular are very low in calories, like no, on, only 48 calories per serving. So it's really good. Um, it's very high in calcium. It gives you about one third of the daily allowance for calcium. And of course, again, also high in fiber. So I want you to show, so in this case, now we're gonna go into our part of cooking. We have here, um, well, a couple of squash, the butternut squash that you already saw how Sam did it. I don't know if you ever seen these ones. This is called the delicata squash. They are great. You, you eat them with the skin, the whole thing. Skin on, you just scrape the seeds. They're really, uh, you steam them, you bake them, you can um, roast them in the oven and it's really good. And these are not as hard as the acorn squash or this one. This is a, this is, um, uh, it's called red curry. It looks like a sugar pumpkin. It's kind of like it, but it's, it's a little different. It's a little sweeter, I think. This can be a little hard. I'm gonna show you your best way to approach to it. I already cut it in half so you can see it. So obviously you, the easiest way is to cut it in half, but I'll show you kind of like cutting it like that. Go with your knife and just directly into, um, kind of like a stabbing motion. That's gonna be your best bet. And then just go down like that. And then on the other side, you do the same. And see, kind of like breaks up. So that'll make the easiest. Also, the, the hardest that I find, I don't have one here, is the, um, 
acorn squash. That was going to be really hard, but for those ones, I would use Sam's technique, which is great of just baking the whole thing in. It'll soften, and then you'll scoop the meat. Um, this one, this, this, um, you eat the whole thing too, skin and all. It's there even with the, what they call the sugar pumpkin, you eat the skin too. Um, so what I recommend then once you have it, you can get a um, spoon and scoop the insides just like that. These are raw. What I'm going to do is steam them and I steamed some for you a little beforehand. Um, so you have it like that, just scoop them and, um, and then just go at it carefully and you know, in kind of large chunks, that's fine. By the way, you'll see some of these ones have a little bit of like dry spots in there. Don't worry about them. Steam them just like that. When you take them out, you could just scrape them with your finger and that's it. But you can eat the, like this part, for example, I don't know if you can see, I would scrape it, but after cooking, um, doesn't matter. So just cut them. You can be like largest chunks like this, okay? So, um, now I'm gonna show you how I did. What I did that, that, and I did some sweet potatoes, cause we're gonna do two kinds of smash, like of this little tiny sweet potatoes that I love. Um, so uh, both of those, I put them in a pan. You can see it here. Let's see if you can see it. Okay, so here's my pan. It's already now nice and steaming. It's already done. Um, use. Use some tongues to get those out. Uh, but if you see the way you're gonna know when they're done, you put them on a steam and see how with a knife, the same knife you go in and out and comes out easily. That's how you know it's the same thing like with the sweet potatoes or potatoes, you come in and out and that's how you tell they're done. Um, so let's start with the sweet potatoes. So JP, they're asking yeah. about, can you eat skin? Uh, can you really eat the skin of, this, of the pumpkin? Yeah, this one, yes, you can. Um, and I'll show you right now. Uh, also, you can eat the skin of the sweet potato. We all know that, right? I mm -hmm. peeled it because I'm gonna mash them. Um, but I just wanted to actually show you for the sweet potato. So that's the one that I just took out. So get your paring knife. I just take out the ends, those I discard. And then with your paring knife, it just, it comes easily. Um, and talking about peel, I wanted to make sure, do not throw away these peels. You know, usually in potatoes or sweet potatoes and also these pumpkins, the, the oops, it's hot. Um, the, don't throw away the, the skins. You know, I, I suggested for you to do, I've sauteed a little bit of onions and then put these in the saute pan, toss them and made that as a filling for a taco with a little chili uh, or cumin. Yeah, you can totally eat those and uh, separate just like that and it's a great thing so you to keep them on anyway so for the um so i'm gonna have my sweet potatoes right there so yeah that the little ends i do discard oh um so grab your sweet potatoes and just get them um with a fork and go at it mash them just like that you if you steam them they're actually gonna be a little bit more moist than if you bake them naturally because the roasting in the oven will like reduce a little bit. So I like to bake, to steam them for the purposes of the mash. Um, and then remember a couple of weeks ago, we made some ginger oil. This is what I have. The ginger oil, remember we went with a little bit of oil. We blended some ginger in it. So this is the perfect thing to add for this ginger oil mash. So it just add, a little goes a long way. And then you can season it with salt and some pepper. I mean, it doesn't get easier than that um, for a little version. And so this one will show you how to have it. So that's number one. And then the other one from the pumpkin. So I have a, a, this, some of this pumpkin that I steamed uh, earlier. And so if you see the skin is on, there's all like that. So if there's any little like, little parts you may want, but I feel that this is all good. So then, yeah, just like that with your fork, look how easy you can still do. So what we're gonna do here is pumpkin butter. So for the pumpkin butter, you're just gonna get your, it's the, as simple as it gets. Again, mash it really nicely, just with a fork. 
you want obviously this is a butter so you want it a uh, um, consistency like a smooth spreadable consistency and it's up to your choice so you can put some cinnamon i have some uh, pumpkin spice high spice so that's great so actually this has cinnamon that has ginger that has um nutmeg so just go at it and sprinkle a little bit to it now if you see in markets that's where they put in the spices they put them out a little bit of salt uh it up to you how do you how you gonna have this because this is two ways there this is you can keep it on the sweet side so just leave it like that because it's naturally sweet um, or you could add some salt uh, and you can add some pepper and then you can use it for different kind of um, um, recipe. Uh, so I'm gonna show you what you would do, um, some options you have to use those. Of course, the easiest one we have here, they even look alike, right? Um, both, this is the sweet potato, this is the pumpkin. So- And you only use the ginger oil for the, um... For the sweet potato you didn't you, you use the all spice for the yeah exactly ginger oil for the okay. sweet potatoes oil a pumpkin spice or cinnamon um for the other one you can switch it doesn't matter so you it doesn't matter but i just want to keep mm -hmm. them separate flavors to it um but mm -hmm. if you like more the ginger oil with the pumpkin you can still do do the same do that um so i have a couple of toasts here that's as easy as it gets um so you grab your you can do a toast like a sweet potato toast and then the the butternut squash soup that Sam did, and that's a meal. So this is one. Um, I think this is very monochromatic, I guess. Then the other one, you can, again, this is a butter, the pumpkin butter, just spread it in your toast. Um, I can smell the spices there. What I like is actually I have here, I'm gonna put this on the side. I have, I don't see it, a beet. I steamed a beet earlier, it has a little bit of a dark spot here, so you can remove it. So then this is an orange bead, but it could be, I saw that you got in your bag some um, red beads. So you can actually do a little thin slice of the, the beads. And then I would just decorate our pumpkin toast with this, the beads. And you can put a little bit of herbs on top and that would be a serving. That's a good meal as it gets. Um, now for the other option you have, um, let me put this here. So for the other option, again, you can even use both either option. I'm gonna use the pumpkin. Um, so I have a soup. So this soup, the soup has, let me get my spoon. So this is, I don't know if you can see it. I made this earlier. This is, has like some chickpeas, it has barley, some kale, a little bit of, um, um, I did it with a little bit of dried uh, mushrooms um, and um, barley and, oh, and some lentils too. So that's it, see how hearty it is, it's really nice. So that's great, so I had it like yesterday and that was my meal. So I had some leftovers. So this is great because then you can grab your, uh, this is like, you get your hot soup and then you just get like a good tablespoon like a of that and then blend it this is ready to eat but you could just mix it and you're gonna add color different flavor and it gets this creaminess that it's just gonna change the flavor so that remember that one of the key things you want always is do um see how it just changed with that um bright color um you want to also use all your leftovers and you know uh, eat everything you have don't throw away the planet needs, <laughs> we can't be, uh, be throwing away food. So this is a great way to uh, sort of recycle a soup that you had earlier with that pumpkin butter. You're gonna change the flavor of it. It's not gonna be as boring for you to have. Um, and then just, this is ready to eat. So these are how two options, yeah. Okay, how do you, um, there's a question. How do you know, um, how do you pick out a good pumpkin to buy or purchase? Or you know, you've got a good pumpkin, is there, a, the only thing that you really need to look for the pumpkins is that like, for example, these butter and squash, this is as clean as possible. It doesn't have a lot of bruises. In almost every vegetable, you want to avoid a lot of bruises in it. Um, mm -hmm. So you see this one that I had, 
Well, these they these are not bruises. This is the one I was telling you. There's a little bit of like dry spots, but those you can remove easily. But that that's about it. So one thing actually, the this this one. So these look good, but actually this type, for example, has a bruise here. So try to avoid that. Uh, sometimes these bruises can be a little softer. Um, it's sometimes this one wasn't like that, but it's just like I haven't used it in a couple of days, so it probably is scarring. So what I would do here is just like scoop this part and take it out. I won't throw the whole thing away. Just maybe remove these little bruises, but that's it. Um, but yeah, keep um, keep an eye on them just so they're not be a big bruises in them. But that's all it takes because you know these ones really stay. Um, they're great vegetables because they stay uh, for a long time outside. You know, they they don't go off like other fresh vegetables in the summer, um, which is a nice way of nature to keep uh, these things for the winter uh, back in the days when there was no refrigerator or anything like that. Um, yeah, the, the, there's one more question. Um, how did yeah. you do the beets? I did put up a recipe a couple of weeks ago, um, uh, how to steam beets in the oven, but did you do it? It is online. I can repost it. But JP, did you do yours in any particular way? These ones, I steam them. I steam them. I so you saw my setup of the let me see my setup of the steamer. So this this was done in just a regular, you know, my basket and my water is down there and I just start, steamed it uh, and you know with a cover. So you can do that. Beets obviously are very fairly hard. Um, what I, I steam them to speed things up if you have a pressure cooker. Um, and But I, I put them completely whole uh, in the pressure cooker um, and then just let them let them cook for a while. But actually that speeds it to maybe even 15 minutes or something for the whole thing. You can also just pop them directly. If you can wrap it in foil, that's good too. And in, in, in the oven at 350 for like, that takes like a more like a 45 to an hour. Uh, one tip I recommend is, if you're using the beets, take them out of the refrigerator. If you have them in the fridge um, sometime like an hour before or something, you don't want it to be very cold or from the refrigerator. It just takes speeds a lot longer. You'll take a lot longer to fully cook and then you won't co cook as evenly. So have them kind of a little bit of room temperature, nothing bad to that. Um, but yeah, that's how uh, you can either steam them regularly and just it'll take a little while. But um, so these ones, for example, the sweet potato and the, the pumpkin, they probably took like 25 minutes uh, on the steamer at a regular steaming boil, not very hard boil, uh, covered. But the, 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 the beets, if you cook them whole, they might take a little longer in the, like more like 40 minutes or something like that steaming. What you could do is just peel them and then cut them in quarters and that'll definitely speed it to maybe um, to 25 minutes or something like that. So yeah, I, it's your choice on which uh, way you want to do that. Yeah, the, other... uh, the way that I did my beets, I just put them in the oven with some water and steamed them in the oven uh, with some fresh rosemary, salt and pepper. It makes it really easy to peel them after, after they've cooled down. And yeah. you know, they taste terrific. The smell that you get from the kitchen is like beautiful. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, and obviously the orange the orange beets are a little bit more easy to wield because they don't stain as much. So peeling mm -hmm. these and then cooking them is not so bad. Peeling the the be the red ones, it just like yeah. gets a lot of all over, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, any question? Any more questions? How long can you store a pump? Um, how long can you store a pumpkin on, or squash? What oil did you use for the ginger oil again? Okay, you can use, um, okay, I'll let yeah. you take. So for the pump, how long do you, can you store? You, uh, if you mean pu cooked pumpkin or squash, cooked, if they're already cooked, store them as you would do any vegetable, pretty much. Uh, maybe either the refrigerator cover, but maybe like three to five days tops they still will go bad once they're cooked. So you have to eat them as soon as possible. You can freeze them. Actually, you can do this mash. If you have a lot of it, you can half of it, you know, put it and eat it. The other one, you can freeze it. Um, and then you can take it out. You know, freezing would take out um, a lot longer. Um, so you can keep it for longer. But yes, you can freeze them. Uh, in terms of the ginger oil, 
I use a neutral oil. It was it could be either any vegetable oil, not olive oil, because that's a little bit of um flavorful. So we will like kind of like uh, compete with the ginger flavor. But you try like maybe like canola oil, uh, like a corn oil. Just um, I think I use the one that it's uh, safflower oil or safflower oil. It's very neutral. It's a high heat oil and um, it just gets absorbs all the ginger oil flavor once you blend it. Um, again, how long will the beets keep once you cook them? Similar to the pumpkin, three to five days uh, to slice them. I recommend to you once you cook them, peel them, slice them, and you're ready basically to put them on a salad here, get them on a snack there. And so by before you know it, they'll be gone. Um, but yeah, so the, the, I mean, the beets still will leave. You'll need to um, eat them three to three, four days maybe. Um, yeah, and you can chuck that. your beet, and you can chuck your beets in a smoothie. Oh yeah, that's a great idea too. So <laughs> they're soon cooked, gone. Yeah. <laughs> Once they're cooked, I love beets, so I could just keep eating and eating. So, mm -hmm. um, how do you store beets again? Airtight glass container, maybe a Pyrex dish. Is that the? Would you recommend yeah. that? Yeah. Once you cook them, yeah, slice them and put them in a covered container. Um, mm -hmm. You can be a, a plastic container; it's fine too. But I prefer yeah. glass in general for most of the things. Uh, can they be on the counter before? Before cooking? Yeah, one, I, I mean, if they're raw, but I'm, I was saying, like, if you want to bring them to room temperature, yes, take them out to the refrigerator, just put them, you know, these are, have to be nice, well washed and everything, but put them yeah. in the counter for like uh, 30 minutes at least or something like that, then they get to room temperature and then you can pop them in the oven or steam them or whatever you want to do. Okay, so as you can see, my soup is almost done from the start to the finish and like yeah. I'm gonna let that cool down and blend but you see it's almost like um, it's almost blended it's just making it a little bit smoother to get them little lumps out so you have a cream of butternut squash and you don't use no cream yeah a lot of these recipes yeah Sam is correct they usually tend to tell you to put a lot of cream you don't have to it's really creamy on its own um, and I always say, if you want a little bit of the taste of the cream or like a yogurt, you can add a dollop at serving time. That's much mm -hmm. better than adding a huge, usually like a cup or something like that during cooking. And that uh, definitely increases a lot of the calories um, in, and the fat in the dish. So you could always control it more if you do want it just at the end uh, uh, during serving time. Um, yeah, so ma make sure off. to try to make them make them at home with their beautiful oh one more thing i see i saw that the great uh, csa from sally cooper some of the things you have is uh called rabi um i think they had a picture of it it's a uh, so treated like a remember i've talked about hikama before here like this root vegetable it is called rabi is a root vegetable it's a light green and it, it has with the little stems coming out. Just peel it. You can eat it raw. You can like um, use one of those like um, graters and just um, grate it like a slaw and put it with some uh, lemon, olive oil, and just eat it like that. Or you can steam it like potatoes and also have it sliced. Yeah. Um, one quick, uh, another question's just come up. Um, JP, can you freeze this soup after you've made it? Yeah, that's great to freeze it in a glass container. Uh, as always, I said, when for liquids, are you freezing liquids? Put it in the freezer, uncovered first until like it. I know, obviously, not to the top, so kind of like two thirds of the way, and let it um, and let it freeze, and then you can cover it. Uh, but yeah, you can keep it. This is a great soup to uh, freeze, uh, so that you can, you know, in a month or something, you take it out, and then you have a meal done really easily. So it's a credit card um, to do to freeze. Alrighty. I think we're good. I think we're done. Okay, everyone. Yeah. It was great to see you yesterday, as always. Um, and we will be back next week. Great. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. Bye.